The first video essay I ever made was on one of my most hated comics of all time. I got plenty of ridiculous comments, most of which were caught by YouTube's auto-filters and I had to go through and manually approve them because I don't believe in that fuck shit. Yeah, go on, that's right, come on, let the people hear, let them know, speak your truth, king, talk your shit. <laughs> I'm not surprised by these comments at all. Obviously fans of the series are gonna get mad when you make a 40 minute video shit talking the series they like. But what I did find weird was the abundance of people who said, Haha yeah, Rooftop Master sucks. If you want a good example of how to do a story like this, read this instead. This began my descent into the trash heap that is Korean bully revenge manhwa. I'd already seen some of these and already knew there was a big market for series like this, but I didn't understand just how fucking many there were and how fucking trash every single one is. It's the same fucking thing. Every time. MC gets bullied relentlessly, has a big tragic breaking point, then gets strong and comes back for revenge effortlessly. People are so ready to try to just deflect any criticism of these series under this fucking shield of, oh it's for victims of bullying, which is just bullshit. I could go on for ages about why these series are other fucking shit that benefit from encouraging a just give up escapism mindset in victims of bullying, and in the first draft of this video I did. I think I'll save that for another video. Because this one is supposed to be highlighting a great series, not talking about the ones that suck. But I think that pretext is important to let you know where I'm coming from as I bring you into the story of Shark. Fresh off reading dozens of trash power fantasies, and in the middle of manually approving all these fuckboy comments, someone drops another suggestion. Incorrectly, they tell me that the guy who made Rooftop Swordmaster has actually moved on and is making another series called Shark that's actually really good. Actually really good has been in just about every suggestion I've gotten so far, so it doesn't instill confidence. Again, to be clear, Shark is not made by the same author as Rooftop Swordmaster, but I can see why they believed it was. Because Shark is an online webcomic, more specifically a manhwa. It's about a small blue-haired middle schooler who's been horribly bullied, getting stronger to defeat his bully who he also wants to kill. Sound familiar? The art style is even pretty similar. As I started reading this, I obviously did not have high expectations, especially when the bully began acting in a typical over-the-top fashion all these bullies do. However, I kept reading, and pretty quickly, I realized this series was different. And the more I read, the more different it became. I can now say that I'm caught up with the English translation, and Shark is one of my top 10 favorite comics of all time. I think it's finally time to dive in. Before we start actually, I'm gonna talk about the sponsor for this video. Throughout these videos, I've gotten a lot of comments from people asking me where I'm able to find all these series and read them online. Bigger comics and manga obviously have mainstream publishers, but it can be hard to find a site to read lesser known series without getting barraged with terrible ads and viruses. Alright, just gonna check out this next episode here, and oh wow, hentai heroes. Which brings me to today's sponsor, VoiceMe. VoiceMe is an English webcomic platform that both hosts and publishes comics, manhwa, webtoons, and even written works. Not only do they have their own original works that they release regularly, but you can also submit your own webcomics if you're just looking to get more support and attention. You can read tons of series from start to finish for free, all while discovering and supporting new authors rather than some random guy who just bought a domain through ads on it. Some of their most popular series are The Mad Gate and God Game, which I just recently caught up with. Whether you're looking to platform your own series or just looking for comics to read, click the link in the description to check it out or join the Discord. Now let's get back to the video. Now, fair warning about the series. As far as I can see, there's only one fan translation out there, and to be completely honest, it's pretty fucking bad. I appreciate that they're trying, but it's really rough to get through sometimes. They often can't even make up their mind on how most of the names should be translated and completely change them from time to time, making it extremely hard to follow. Luckily, Shark is so great at conveying its story through its visuals, you can often get the true meaning out even with the poor translation and strange wording. So if you see weird dialogue, that's because of the translation, not the series itself. We start off the series with an introduction to Jung Doo Hyun, a prodigy MMA fighter who's the WFF champion at only 20 years old. The WFF is basically this comic's copyright free version of the UFC. It's a global MMA franchise known for housing the best fighters in the world. After winning his third title defense, he goes out drinking with some friends and tells his mom to leave the door unlocked since he'll be home late. This ends up being a terrible mistake as a group of robbers let themselves in and end up killing his family. They turn their attention to Doo Hyun who goes berserk and kills them all. Then, three years later, we're taken to our protagonist, Cha Wu Sol, or as he's for some reason called here, Shao Sol. He's just starting high school. He's excited to have a whole fresh new start and dive into a place where no one knows him except his childhood friend Ji Hee. 
Again, spelled Yan Jihui here. I have no way of knowing which version is actually correct, so I'm just going to stick with the version used more often. Wu So and Ji were separated for a while because they went to different middle schools, so he's happy to finally see her again. However, she's not the only familiar face. The teacher introduces another student, Bei Sok Chun, one of the only characters whose name is consistently spelled the same. Sok Chun is a young promising boxer, who also happens to be Wu Sol's bully from middle school. As soon as the teacher leaves, Sok Chun starts causing problems, asking who the boss of the class is. A tough looking kid steps up and gets laid the fuck out before Sok Chun begins establishing his authority to the rest of the class. He turns his attention to Wu Sol, who begins to panic as he remembers his terrible treatment from middle school. Wu Sol was subject to many kinds of torment from Sok Chun, including stealing his Dream Tree card to buy snacks and toss them out. A Dream Tree card seems to be something similar to an EBT or food stamps card in America. A government issued card that has a regular allowance for buying food to support low-income families. There's obviously physical abuse too, with Sok Chen using Wu Sol as practice for his boxing skills. Wu Sol tries to tell the teacher, who has a pretty typical reaction, you two shake hands and make up, tell him you're sorry and that'll be that. This obviously just pissed Sok Chen off and made things worse for Wu Sol though. The torment becomes so much that Wu Sol eventually tries to take his own life. He wakes up in the hospital to sobbing parents and his friend Sok Chan at his bedside. He's too afraid to tell the truth that Sok Chan's bullying made him do it, and says it's because his grades were slipping and he couldn't take the pressure. It says the local newspaper runs a story about it called Sexually Pessimistic Middle Schooler Student Attempted Suicide, which I think is some weird fucked up translation because not only is it worded super strange, but I have no idea what the hell his sexuality has to do with it or what sexually pessimistic is supposed to mean. My best guess is that this is supposed to read something like like, virgin teenager attempts suicide, but even then, it has nothing to do with sex, and he's in middle school, so <laughs> what the fuck? With no escape and Sok Chan's bullying getting worse, Wu Sol devoted everything to studying hard so he could get accepted into a prestigious high school where he'd be able to escape everyone. And obviously, this backfired, as Sok Chan ended up getting accepted to the same school for his boxing skills. Wu Sol's panic increases as he realizes that this treatment is going to continue for another three years. He freezes up under Sok Chan's harassment until Ji Hee finally steps in and tells him to fuck off. However, he doesn't even hesitate to start attacking her next. Wu Sol tells Sok Chan to stop and he starts smacking him around for talking back while their other classmates help Ji Hee. Wu Sol swings at him and immediately gets taken down. While he's on the ground, Wu Sol's trauma keeps gnawing at him. His hatred and fear of Sok Chan keep building up until he gets up and rushes at him again. Sok Chan calmly awaits his punch. Only it wasn't a punch. Wu Sol stabs out one of his eyes with a pen, and then completely loses it, stabbing him over and over while screaming that he needs to die. After he stabbed Sok Chan a dozen times, his classmates finally step in and grab him before he can finish a job. Wu Sol is put on trial for stabbing his classmate 23 times and nearly killing him. The defense argues that it was self-defense after suffering three years of torment at Sok Chan's hand, while the prosecutor argues that stabbing someone 23 times and causing permanent blindness cannot possibly be considered self-defense. Their arguments won't really matter though, as Wu Sol will fully admit himself that he attempted to kill and, Sok Chan. Uh, yeah, I stabbed him 37 times in the chest. Against the advice from his lawyer that admitting such will upgrade his case from assault to attempted murder, Wu Sol clarifies that he indeed was trying to kill Sok Chan and is sentenced to three years in juvenile prison. Something that should be clarified here is that South Korean juvenile prisons are different from those in America. In America, juvie isn't even really seen as a real prison, and the age limit is 17 to 18. In Korea, it seems to be taken much more seriously, and the age limit tends to be higher, around 19 to 20 from what I can find. There's also some wiggle room, such as probation and parole periods, as well as sentencing. I'm not gonna act like I'm an expert on it. The whole reason I'm telling you this is that Do Hyun, the MMA fighter from the beginning, is finally receiving his sentence after years of legal bullshit, and is sentenced to 10 years in prison. However, he'll only be getting moved over to adult prison in 6 months when he turns 23 and is currently heading back to the same prison as Wu Sol. Wu Sol seems to be the only person who doesn't know who Du Hyun is and sits next to him, entertaining him with his innocent, mindful disposition. As he's being registered into the prison, he makes a friend in another prisoner, An Hyun Min. The group of new prisoners are introduced to Ming Jong Tae, a waiting room facilitator tasked with preparing them for their time here. Basically, they have a bit of time where they aren't considered full prisoners and are just new prisoners and he gets some time off for helping them along. While that's happening, Do Hyun meets with the warden who basically makes it clear he doesn't agree with the sentencing, but ultimately has to obey the law. He tells Do Hyun he'll do whatever he can to make his remaining 6 months as comfortable as possible, and Do Hyun isn't really interested. The next day, Jong Tae is preparing the newbies for prison life with general advice on how to avoid trouble. He tells them that in here, nothing on the outside matters. There's no money, status, parents, or fame. Just your own strength. He tells them that the prisoners are divided into different labor groups, and each group has a designated boss. He warns them of the three current bosses, Jong Sung Hyop, 
Lee Wan Jung, and Han Sun Young. He tells them that Jung Sung Hyop is particularly big and strong among the three. He tells them that this place is a gathering of bullies, gangsters, and generally all kinds of people who enjoy fighting. Wu Sol begins to panic as he starts to realize he might run into more people like Sok Chan here. In the halls, we get a proper look at Wan Jun and Sun Young, who nearly clash before getting interrupted by a guard who threatens to put them in solitary like Song Hyop. We also get to see a bit of Song Hyop in solitary, complaining that it's too small for him to even lay down. Wu Sol and the others are now in class, because this is a juvenile detention facility and they're still required to learn the basic curriculum. Everyone is bored out of their mind until Wu Sol speaks up to answer the teacher's question, something that never happens. This draws some unwanted attention from Wan Jun, and Zhang Tae tells Wu Sol he fucked up, reminding him of the key advice to not move forward forwards or backwards, but stay in the middle. The prisoners are let out for exercise time. Hyun Min at first wants to play soccer, but after being told by Jung Tae that it's a bad idea since the heads of each team are Wan Jun and Sun Young, he and Wu Sol attempt to sit the game out. Unfortunately, two of the players get hurt, and they're forced to join up to replace them. Wu Sol is put on Sun Young's team and ends up getting a lucky steal from Wan Jun. In a panic, he closes his eyes and just goes to kick the ball as hard as he can. <laughs> When he opens his eyes back up, he realizes he's kicked Wan Jun straight in the nuts, downing him and winning the game for his team. Wan Jun takes Wu Sol to a vacant corner and gets his revenge as you could expect. But he also says he's gonna make Wu Sol come to the same spot every day for 10 nut kicks for the next 100 days. Wan Jun's torment is interrupted when Du Hyun shows up. Du Hyun steps in to help and basically tells them to fuck off, but Wan Jun realizes he can't do that in front of his boys without looking like a bitch. As Du Hyun's attempting to take Wu Sol out of there, Wan Jun calls him out. Du Hyun calls his bluff, saying that he's shaking while making his threats, and Wan Jun finally gets the courage to swing. Du Hyun avoids all of his punches, ultimately knocking him out with one clean hit to the jaw. Wu Sol is amazed, and begins to realize that his experience with Sok Chen made him think that martial arts were just for evil bastards who liked hurting people. But after seeing Du Hyun's display, he's inspired, despite being basically the only person in the prison unfamiliar with him. Du Hyun takes him out of there and tells him that in prison, there's only two paths. Learn to bow and obey, or get strong enough that no one messes with you. In their car shop class, Hyun Min starts asking Wu Sol about what happened. And Wu Sol finally learns that Do Hyun is a world-renowned MMA fighter, before they're told to shut the fuck up by the instructor. After the class, Wu Sol is pulled away because he has a visitor. He's excitedly expecting Ji Hee, only to find that it's Sok Chan waiting for him. If you're like me when I was first reading this, at this point you're not particularly invested. At this point I was still mostly just along for the ride, waiting for the moment Wu Sol got strong so we could have endless flashbacks about how Sok Chan ruined his life and made him shit his pants and take drugs and burn down his house. But the key that makes Shark so great while all the other series like this fail is actual characterization for all of its characters. A lot of these guys have the typical setup you see, you're expecting them to just be dumb bullies who Wu Sol's gonna get strong and cruelly decimate for revenge but they're not. They might be assholes, but they're all actual characters who will ultimately be fleshed out and actually fucking matter is something more than stepping stones or punching bags. Sok Chan appeared like a generic bully at first. Hell, he even does the stupid fucking tongue thing all the bullies do in these comics for some reason. But as we're about to see, there's much more to it than that. We get a full backstory for Sok Chan. Not Sok Chan's backstory from Wu Sol's point of view, but from Sok Chan's point of view. As it turns out, he's pretty much always been like this. He's a prodigy fighter with excellent eyesight that allows him to read his opponents naturally. He's not your typical webcomic bully who's a popular, cowardly bitch picking on people weaker than him. He has always been fighting just about everyone his age. He has always been seeking out fights with the strongest people in his classes. Let's look back to the first scene with Sok Chan. Remember when Ji Hee stepped in to tell him to leave Lu Sol alone? Now normally, in most of these manhua, this is where the bully gets scared and backs off. As soon as a woman or parent gets involved, they slither away like scared little rats and come back later for revenge. But Sok Chan just immediately kicks Ji Hee's entire desk down on top of her and sent the whole class into a panic. This was the first sign that Sok Chan wasn't just your typical throwaway bully that purely exists for the MC to get revenge on. In all of these manhua, they always have the bully do the most extreme, convoluted, over-the-top shit. It's not enough that the bully beats up the MC, they have to literally ruin every facet of their life. They have to make a group chat where they tell them what to do every day. They have to make them shit themselves. They have to be rich and popular. They have to make his parents burn themselves alive, and they have to get away with it. And most importantly, they have to be a weak coward who is just bullying someone weaker than they are. 
But the first thing Sok Chan did was challenge the toughest guy in the class, prison rule style, and whoop his ass. And when confronted, he doesn't shrivel up like a bitch. He cleverly slinks his way out of it with a smile or just beats the fuck out of whoever else is in his way. This isn't a popular kid beating down on the unpopular kid. This guy is just an asshole. No one in the class likes him, but he's actually fucking capable of handling himself, which makes him a legitimate threat unlike the sniveling cowards we're used to seeing. Wu Su is not some singular obsession of his, he's just one of many people this guy beats up. If you look back on it, Sok Chan was a fucking asshole, but nothing he did really goes beyond standard, typical bullying. Wu Su tried to kill himself, but Sok Chan wasn't there directly slitting his wrists for him. I'm not saying it's not his fault, but the fact that Shark has attacked to make Sok Chan just a normal bully who steals lunch money and beats people up shows the respect it actually has towards its topic of choice. It doesn't need to make Sok Chan burn down Wu Su's house or rip his teeth out one by one. Shark understands that this is not what normal bullying is like. It's not a normal thing for teenagers to form up death squads and attempt to kill their victims. It's not normal for an entire friend group to be single-mindedly obsessed with torturing one kid endlessly. It's not normal that these beyond sociopathic motherfuckers are the popular ones. And the only reason I say it's not normal instead of it's bullshit is because someone will be like, hmm, well actually in 1978 there was an example of a group of high schoolers who broke into their victim's house and shut the fuck up. Using the absolute most extreme, ridiculous standout examples and treating them as if they're the standard just flanderizes the problem to such high proportions that people act like actual bullying isn't that bad. There's an infamous Family Guy episode that tries to cover the topic of domestic abuse in one of its typical Emmy bait forced emotional episodes. It's infamous because it does with domestic abuse what all these series do with bullying. I don't get that one! <laughs> It exaggerates a serious problem to such ridiculous proportions that it just becomes a fucking joke. Jeff is Brenda's abusive boyfriend, but they make him into such complete caricature that their later attempts to act like they're treating the matter seriously are completely fucking flatlined, even if they weren't garbage for a myriad of other reasons. Can you find examples of people like Jeff who loudly and openly beat their partner in real life? Yes, the world's a big fucking place. Excusing your garbage characters with niche examples from real life doesn't make them realistic. You know what else is realistic and happens all the time? People getting hit by lightning. Does that mean having your antagonist get killed mid-battle by a lightning strike isn't fucking stupid? In the same way Jeff is this ridiculous, comical caricature of domestic abuse, all these other characters are comical caricatures of bullying. In the same way that a character who is too much of a goody two-shoes, who is made purely to be a good boy you like is annoying, a character who is way too much of an over-the-top constant asshole made purely for you to hate is annoying. I don't give a shit if these characters get what's coming to them, it's not satisfying because I know that's purely what you made them exist for. If these series are really supposed to be escapes for victims of bullying, they should probably cover normal bullying that most people experience instead of these over-the-top exaggerations. And that's exactly what Shark does. What Wu So went through is terrible and you actually feel bad for him because his story feels realistic instead of feeling like a 16-year-old Saw fanfiction. You actually care about Wuso because he isn't just a voodoo doll made to take abuse as an excuse for him to go on a crazy rampage and do whatever he wants. You actually hate Sok Chen because he isn't just a straw man made to dish out the abuse so he can get burned down later. And you know the best part about not making Sok Chan into a simple plot device to inflict suffering on Wuso? He gets to be his actual own fucking character. Sok Chan is someone who was naturally gifted from birth and went on to even enhance those talents, but got so full of himself that he belittled everyone around him and treated them like trash. Then in one instance, in one slip up, his bright future was ruined because he couldn't change his ways. Sok Chan's eye is completely destroyed by Wu Sol's attack and he's forced to give up boxing by his coach. Before, Wu Sol was just one of the many people he treated like shit, but now, Sok Chan has a legitimate motivation to hate Wu Sol. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it because he fucking did, but let's be honest. You think this guy is gonna admit his wrongs and change his ways after he's had his future ruined? Or do you think he's going to do what every one of these protagonists do and dedicate himself entirely to revenge? That's right, Shark is a bully revenge manhwa. But it's not about Wu Sol trying to get revenge on Sok Chan. It's about Sok Chan trying to get revenge on Wu Sol. The script has been flipped. It's not about Wu Sol getting so mad and so angry that he comes back for revenge. It's about the fact that he has to deal with this incredibly dangerous motherfucker coming for revenge on him.
The stakes are set. Wusou has three years before he's released and Sok Chan comes for him. He struggles to fall asleep as he laments over making enemies of such dangerous people, wondering if it's really his fault, wondering if the reason this keeps happening is because he's too weak. The following day, he goes to Do Hyun and asks him to teach him to fight. Do Hyun obviously denies him, but Wusou presses on, saying he wants to get stronger, to change from how he used to be. This is a pretty common thing in tons of stories, but in this genre? This is a fucking groundbreaking revolution. In a genre where every character is a mild-mannered loser who gets strong simply because they were pushed too far and wants revenge, a character who genuinely reflects on himself and wants to be a better person is fucking groundbreaking. Wusou is not your typical shonen protagonist who believes everyone can get along and be friends. We saw that when he tried to kill Sok Chun, but he's not your generic manhwa protagonist who is the edgy epic punisher of evil who has felt the most ultimate sadness beyond anyone else. Wusou realizes that while what happened to him isn't his fault, it still happened because of who he is. Wusou didn't do anything wrong, but if you're a pushover, you're going to be pushed over. That's just how the world is, no magic sword falling from the sky is going to change that. Very similar to the only good couple of chapters of Rooftop Swordmaster, Wu Sol is bettering himself to be a better him, to survive in this cruel world we all have to live in. Obviously though, Do Hyun doesn't know any of this, he just knows some skinny kid is asking for his help and that sounds like a pain in the ass. He tells him that an amateur seeking out the help of a world class athlete is like asking Einstein to teach you your times tables. Wu Sol says that he doesn't just want to learn basic self defense, but he wants to be like Do Hyun. Do Hyun says that if Wu Sol can run the same 10,000 meters as him before the workout time is up, he'll teach him, but he can't stop the rest at all. Wu Sol feels pretty confident, since running was one of his better skills in school. The laps start and Do Hyun's impressed that he's still holding on after 5. Wu Sol tells himself he's just gotta do it 20 more times. At 10 laps, he's struggling and reminds himself it's just 15 more times. At 13 laps, he's starting to break down. Wu Sol is continually lapped by Do Hyun, sweating terribly, face flush, starting to break down completely. Do Hyun finishes in 32 minutes, and he tells Wu Sol his body's just not capable of making it. Wu Sol begins thinking he should stop. After all, he's gonna fail anyways, why put himself through more pain if it's useless? But he's assaulted with visions of Suk Chan beating him, telling him that he should give up because losers like him will always be that. Losers. It motivates him to keep going, no matter what. Even if it kills him, he won't quit. Do Hyun becomes so concerned that he actually tells Wu Sol to stop, but he doesn't even hear him. He keeps going, not to overcome Suk Chan, but to overcome himself. Even after vomiting, he just keeps running until Do Hyun finally steps in and forces him to stop. As Wu Sol passes out, Do Hyun remarks that he can't believe his first tap out was to a kid. While Wu Sol is in the infirmary, Do Hyun visits the warden to call in the favor he was promised earlier, asking for Wu Sol to be moved to his cell. Wu Sol's training with Do Hyun begins immediately, and despite the hundred push ups, sit ups, and squat anime regimen you'd expect, Do Hyun actually tests Wu Sol's limits and sets some very realistic goals. I'm going to skip a lot of this, not because it's boring, but I try to only go into storyteller mode when I need to explain a part of the story for something else I'm going to say. For example, I can't explain to you Wu Sol's motivations without you knowing where they come from. It might not seem like it, but I really try to avoid just reading out stories I talk about, because most of the time I want people to actually check them out for themselves. I appreciate Du Hyun's more grounded, realistic training, and the fact that we're not given a quick training montage. We're actually taken along for the ride of Wu Sol's journey, physically and mentally. But for the sake of not just reading you the comic verbatim, I'm going to summarize most of these very quickly. So first up, Du Hyun tests how many push-ups, sit-ups, and pull-ups Wu Sol can do. He says that by the end of the day, he wants him to surpass all of those limits by one. Wu Sol struggles but manages to pull it off, with the hardest obviously being the pull-up, which he got zero on. He refuses to give up, even when his hands start bleeding, and ultimately has already begun surpassing his limits. Next up, Du Hyun tells him he has to eat a fuck ton to bulk up so he can actually start putting on some muscle mass, and Do Hyun asks why he's so desperate to get stronger. Wu Sol explains his situation to him, and Du Hyun says that Sok Chan is a son of a bitch, but but he's got a high level of talent. Do Hyun says that even with three years of training, reaching Sok Chan's level is basically impossible. Wu Sol says he knows that, but he doesn't care. He's not gonna run away anymore. Do Hyun then drops one of my favorite lines. He says that Sok Chan targeting Wu Sol for his revenge should be comforting, because revenge is what a loser would do against a winner. In other words, you've already beaten him once. Ooh, ooh, does that sting? Talk your shit, Do Hyun. Wait a minute. Do Hyun. Da Hun. Oh, it's him. We're then taken to the woman's side of the prison, where we meet Bae Yeun Jin, who I'm also going to talk very sparingly about, because she's not very important until later on. All you really need to know is that she's a loner who whoops ass. Do Hyun and Wu Sol do some more training, while Wan Jon laments that he can't fuck up Wu Sol since he's always hanging out with Do Hyun. Wu Sol continues to train and train and train, until he finally rips his shirt while doing his 40 second pull up. Wu Sol's finally starting to show some real improvement, and Do Hyun says they're ready to start the serious training.
Now, if any of you have seen an anime before, which I know you fucking have, you're very familiar with the idea of a protagonist training to beat the bad guy. Something I think about sometimes when this happens is, well, what about the bad guy? Are they just sitting on their ass, waiting to be surpassed and defeated? Manga, manhwa, comics, movies, TV shows, this is a very common oversight across basically all media. Idle antagonists who are just waiting around as benchmarks for the MC to train up and defeat so they can move on to the next one. But Shark doesn't do this. While you are doing your first pull-up, Sok Chan is training. While you're just learning how to properly make a fist, Sok Chan is brawling in the streets. While you're making fond memories bonding with your mentor, Sok Chan is joining up with crime syndicates. While Wu Sol is just barely getting his footing in prison, Sok Chan is fighting with gangsters and going through his own revenge training arc. I said it before, but Sok Chan is not a generic bully. He's not a punching bag or a stepping stone. He doesn't exist purely to push Wu Sol over the edge and turn him into a monster. Sok Chan is his own character, and we get to see how he lives his life when he's not tormenting Wu Sol. Sok Chan becomes the personal enforcer of Hyun Mu Yong, a leader of an important criminal organization that controls most of Seoul. He goes around just beating the fuck out of whoever Wu Yong tells him to, facing danger constantly. Sok Chan is not just a simple bully. Sok Chan is a sadistic bastard, just like most of the other bullies in Manhua, but what separates him are two things. Authenticity and capability. Most of these bullies are shown to be sadistic as a simple plot device so that they can make the MC suffer and then the MC can get revenge, at which point they immediately back down, shit their pants, because they are all actually weak cowards. But almost nothing about Sok Chun is weak, and he doesn't fucking back down for anyone. He isn't just a surface level sadist that will abandon his goals the moment things look bad. He stays completely true to his sadistic personality, no matter what's thrown at him. Shark doesn't pull its punches out of fear of making its bully look like a badass. Sok Chan is a piece of shit, but goddamn is he also a badass. And that is so key to what makes this so much better than any other series like it. Sok Chan is an actual threat. He's not just some popular 16 year old who's mildly fit and rich. You are actually fucking scared of this man. He has surpassed the silly little title of bully and is just an actual fucking menace. Not because he's so ridiculously over the top twisted and sick. Sok Chan's sadism isn't like Jigsaw level or anything, he just likes to hurt people, plain and simple. Sok Chan isn't scary because he's so evil that he'll kill your puppy and light your house on fire. He just wants to hit you and see you bleed. And he's scary because there's very little that can stop him. While Wu Sol is training with Du Hyun to just barely learn how to fight, Sok Chan is carving his way through entire criminal organizations solo and going absolutely apeshit. Back in the prison, Wu Sol's training is interrupted by a visit from Hyun Min. He complains that Sun Yong's group has been getting out of hand and says that he joined the maintenance group because Zhang Tae had told them that Song Hyop was the strongest of the three bosses. Problem is, Song Hyop is back in solitary and has punishment extended. Since their boss is MIA, the maintenance group has been constantly harassed by John Wan and Yu Sung. But things are gonna change because Song Hyop is finally getting out of solitary today. We're finally introduced to the legendary Song Hyop. Hyun Min says that what he did to get put in solitary for so long made him believe he's truly a a monster. A new prisoner named Jang Bong Jung had just arrived and was picking fights with everyone he could and drew the attention of Song Hyop. Song Hyop ordered him to stop fighting since he'd clearly won and Jang obviously wasn't very keen on obeying orders. Begrudgingly, Song Hyop accepted Jang's challenge and he began having second thoughts as he saw that Song Hyop is a fucking giant. He refuses Song Hyop's offer to back down and attacks before quickly having his skull driven into the ground and cracked open. Sun Young meets up with Wan Jong to discuss the issue of Song Hyop getting out of solitary. They plan to team up and take him down since neither can take him on their own, but if they just assault him, they'll get sent to solitary, so they have to make him attack first. Back at Sung Hyop's room, the second in command informs Sung Hyop of the troubles his group faced while he was gone, and he tells them not to worry about it since he's back. Despite his reputation, Sung Hyop is surprisingly chill, only stepping in to protect his group when they're harassed. Sun Yong fails to rile him up despite his best attempt to pick a fight. Sun Yong and Wan Jong continue trying to make problems for the maintenance group, and it becomes clear he's not going to be able to solve things peacefully. He meets them in the same hidden spot Wu Sol was taken to. Sung Hyop tries to avoid a fight, but tells them he's not afraid to take them both to solitary with him. Sun Young says they won't be going to solitary, because they'll say that he attacked first, and that he stands no chance against the three of them. Sung Hyop says he's ready to- wait, three? Sung Hyop's second in command betrays him, moving over to join the others. Sung Hyop remembers back to how he ended up in prison in the first place. He used to be a basketball player who snapped after another rich player bribed the refs and even his own coach. Sung Hyop lost it and injured him so badly that he couldn't play anymore. With his fear of betrayal triggered, Sung Hyop says they won't have to make up any story about him attacking first because he's about to tear them in half. 
I had that crack way back when I backed that work up. I told all my verses, niggas don't wanna verse us. I murder verses worse, so you understand why they worship. They ain't ready for my type. Curse up, get sipped up. Persia. I don't give a fuck if he deep. I'm working who first up. Don't be another reason somebody digging the earth up. You gon' get a chauffeur that's willing to pull your hearse up. Hell and back, you don't know what I've been through. God on my side in the big ass pistol. Bad to the bone, yeah, I'm bad to the gristle. The boogeyman bitch, nigga, I come and get you. Pump a nigga with lead, erase him like a pencil. I stay with a bunch of cold bricks like a nigga. Money over bitches, no tricking, look, I ain't him. Boo, now hop up in this whip and blow me just like the wind do. Used to get that work out like aerobics, nigga. I made a living moving bowls like a goldfish, nigga. Make every move, I be in mind for what your goal is, nigga. The gold and glitter, the reason rappers soul is, nigga. Rap God won't he do it, bitch, I'm gon' deliver. Before my kids starve, I got the guts to poke a liver. Light him up if he get close to motion sensor. Don't put my name in the credits like a motion picture. Or I'll be shooting like I'm in the fucking bonus, nigga. I'll put your ass in the box like you homeless, nigga. I try to tell you I'm the coldest, nigga. I had to snap and wake him up like hypnosis. Nigga, I'm hot as Satan in a sauna with a coach and chiller Now you no longer have to argue who the gold is Nigga, LeBron James, I've been killing for the longest Nigga, it's like they think I changed my first name to Otis Nigga, they be like, oh this nigga fly, oh this nigga shot a few quick things to cover from Seung Hyup's fight, he's very intentionally not skilled at fighting, but he's so big, strong, and fast that it doesn't matter. The way he even stands is mirrored with Wu Sol's inexperienced stance. He's an athlete who is pure physical ability, the strongest beginner. After Seung Hyup kicks all three of their asses, they're all sent to the hospital. Not just the prison infirmary, but the hospital. Seung Hyup's so injured that he'll be out all summer, and the guy who betrayed him is nearly paralyzed. You might be wondering, what does this have to do with Wu Sol? And the answer is, not a lot, obviously. While these circumstances will somewhat affect him since he's living in the same prison, none of this is about him. Because Shark is not a one-dimensional series about one guy beating up everyone in his way. It's a series with plenty of actual characters with personalities living their lives independent of the MC. Speaking of the MC, let's get back to him for a bit. After a few more months of training, Du Hyun's time is up and he has one last sparring session with Wu Sol before he has to leave for adult prison. He tells Wu Sol that he's gonna have to fend for himself once he's gone, even though his skills aren't ready to take on most of the enemies that might come his way. He also passes on two mysterious techniques that we don't get to see yet. One is a flawed technique only meant to deal with Sok Chan, and the second one has no use for sparring or matches because it's meant exclusively for killing people. He warns Wu Sol that he shouldn't go for it unless he knows he absolutely has to kill his opponent. He tells him that just seeing the techniques isn't enough, and he's going to have to train the mass of them on his own. Wu Sol says that at first, he was just worried about having to face Sok Chan when he got out of prison, but the more he trained, the more he began to actually enjoy himself. Instead of being stuck in despair, the last few months have filled him with hope. He wants to keep this up and become a professional fighter, to live like Du Hyun. And he says that one day, he wants to have a proper match with Du Hyun in the ring. Du Hyun gives some expiring advice to Wu Sol, saying, well, I don't know, the translator straight up left this part empty. I told you, shit's rough. Luckily, Du Hyun gets a more proper send-off when he ultimately leaves. He tells Wu Sol that he wasn't born with the natural sight or talent of Sok Chun. He doesn't have an incredible body like Song Hyop, nor does he have the power of Wan Jun or the battle sense of Sun Yong. He tells him that the world of professional fighters is swarming with these kinds of naturally gifted individuals, so he has to remind himself of his own talent. Like a shark, he cannot ever stop moving forward if he wants to survive. Three bosses are finally out of the hospital and return to prison. Wan Jun and Sun Young are sentenced to 10 days of solitary, while Song Hyop is given 20 days. On their way to solitary, they mock him over the kinds of problems they can cause with their 10 day lead. A bus shows up and Ji Hee gets off, planning to visit Wu Sol. However, she's told that she can't, because prisoners are only allowed one visitor per day. The visitor today was Suk Chun. Suk Chun taunts Wu Sol and brags about his activities as a gangster, saying that it's even better than boxing because he can beat people more freely. He tells Wu Sol that he'll find him wherever he goes, and Wu Sol tells him he won't hide. He stands strong against Suk Chun's attempts to intimidate him, taking Du Hyun's advice and reminding himself that he already won against him once. Wu Sol's growth isn't just physical, but mental too. He's all around a better, stronger person. Suk Chun notices Wu Sol's improved physique and calloused hands, laughing as he realizes that Wu Sol's been training thinking he can beat him. Wu Sol is able to hold strong until Sok Chun leaves, then he begins to shake and sweat, but he congratulates himself for how much he's improved. 
While this is going on, Bei Yeonjin is starting to have some troubles. There's a new girl at the prison who's trying to take over, and Yeonjin has been told if she causes another violent incident, her sentence will be extended, so she has no choice but to suffer the abuse of the other prisoners as they get revenge on her. Wu Sol is continuing his training on his own, but now that Du Hyun's gone, he has to return to the general population with no protection. He's told he has to join one of the three groups and chooses the maintenance team so he can hang out with Hyun Min. Two members of Wanjon's crew roll up to harass Wu Sol now that Du Hyun's no longer there to scare them off. They call him out to the classic spot behind the warehouse. Wu Sol is glad for the opportunity to finally try his skills out in a real fight after only sparring with and losing to Du Hyun for so long. He apologizes for knocking one of them out and the other one backs off because he doesn't want the smoke. Hyun Min tells Wu Sol that while his strength is impressive, getting involved in petty fights like that will inevitably lead to a cycle of people coming after him for revenge until everyone in the prison is his enemy. Wu Sol decides to try avoiding getting into any more fights and just focus on improving himself instead. Wan Jon and Sun Yong are finally out of solitary and when Wan Jon sees one of his guys injured, he asks what happened. He tells him that he fell off the pull-up bar, and Wan Jun tells him not to give him the same bullshit they tell the staff. He learns the truth and goes to confront Wu Sol. He says he's fine with a little fist fighting, but still wants to make good on his promise from that day. Wu Sol realizes he's not going to be able to live out his days peacefully like he planned, and the fight is inevitable. But more importantly, he wants to test his skills against a real opponent. You don't wanna phone me, slipping it up, you surrounded like Dolby. Act like a lizard, you lonely. You taste like a lizard, you Sobe. Meditate days, I'm lonely. I mean, why, why, I'm Obi. Feeling like home is the homie. Came off the bench like Ginobili. Time had been rolling, no rolling. Possession ain't nothing, they told me. I spoke with the master on O3. They told me that I better so see. On my path, nobly. I got the hands with a bit in the clothes. They wanna beef, but they eating the O3. I'm fucking with God, and we know she. Flats hands are feeling forceful, author more so, tear your torso, ay, ay. Fuck the Morse code that I forego, I'm resourceful, ay, ay. I got the crop, I got the bag and I ain't even shot. Gave me the Sadies, I ain't even cop. All that they gave me, I guess, is a payday. Bank would've seen me, calling the Mayday. You validate me, they wouldn't go long. Hop in the CD, showing the photo. See me with Ruby, stay like a dodo. I'm good for the dope. Talents, I balance, I flip in a row. Water the wrist like I'm flipping on both. She got us a him, but she giving me more. Oof. God damn, how satisfying is it for the fights to actually be fights? God, can you imagine if Wu Sol just became a 9 foot tall monster who one shotted everyone that fucked with him? We'd be missing out on some seriously dope shit. <laughs> Thank god that didn't happen. At the end of the fight, Wu Sol is going fucking berserk again and trying to beat an unconscious Wan Jun to death before he's stopped by Sun Yang, who then challenges him to a fight himself. Just as Hyun Min predicted, there is no beat up the bully and walk away scenario. Wu Sol's stuck in a cycle of having to take on the next challenger over and over. He isn't bothered by this at all. In fact, he tells Sun Young that they don't have to wait and fight in a week, they can throw down right the fuck now. This is the same kid who was shitting his pants if someone looked at him wrong just a few months ago. But Wu Sol isn't invincible, and adrenaline can only do so much. Sun Young knocks his ass out and says they'll fight for real in five days. Hyun Min carries Wu Sol away before any more trouble starts, but rather than being worried about his injuries, he's purely focused on the next fight, already in full analysis mode, trying to figure out how Sun Young landed that kick. Hyunmin brings up how Wu Sol has changed, but Wu Sol says he's still the same. Hyunmin argues that he has. They used to refer to even people his own age using honorifics, but talk directly to Wan Jun and Sun Young. Obviously, we don't really understand what this means fully since English doesn't have these honorifics, but you can think of it as a change from yes sir, no sir, thank you to okay, sure, nah, whatever. Hyunmin doesn't like this change and says that it shows arrogance, that he believes he's above everyone else, but ultimately backs off. Wu Sol is troubled and begins to worry if his change has actually been for the better. Wan Jun and Wu Sol have to meet with the warden due to their injuries and give the usual excuse that they got hurt while working out. He sees right through the bullshit and Wu Sol nearly cracks, but Wan Jun covers for them. Wan Jun says that he won't make any excuses, he lost fair and square, but this won't be their last fight. In a lesser series, Wan Jun would have tattled to the warden and made up a story to get Wu Sol in trouble and become a cowardly little bitch after the feat. But this is Shark, where characters are more than punching bags. Wan Jun is actually growing as a character before he was willing to get Sang Hyop in trouble with a made up story, and now he's covering for Wu Sol and admitting his defeat. 
Usul sees Bae Young Jin again, since they've both been in and out of the shared prison infirmary recently, as she heads back to the woman's side of the prison. The new boss bitch of the prison is tired of Young Jin not giving her a fight and gets all her girls together to jump the shit out of her, which is exactly what she's been waiting for. She was told that any more fighting would have her sentence extended no matter who started it, but was able to, quote unquote, get the warden's permission to defend herself if a bunch of people tried to jump her. The staff come in to discover the mess and begin carting everyone over the infirmary, where Wu Sol is still trying to figure out Sun Yang's kick. Sun Yang is doing his own training, planning to take on Sung Hyop after he takes down Wu Sol. Wu Sol tries to be friendly with Yan Jin while they're in the infirmary together, but is repeatedly shot down until he succeeds in getting a stray cat to approach him after she fails. And later on, when she sees him trying to figure out Sun Yang's kick, she returns the favor and shows him how it's done. The time comes for Wu Sol and Sun Yang's fight, and I'm gonna be honest, I've already done way too many montage edits. If you want to see this, you're gonna have to read it for yourself. Yourself. I think I've properly demonstrated how hyped the fights in this series are, and this one is the best yet. So, spoiler, Wu Sol just barely comes out to Victor with a rear naked choke, but even as he's passing out, Sun Yang refuses to back down and gives a final middle finger. Wu Sol manages to contain himself and doesn't try to kill his opponent this time, but the whole group gets busted by the guards. They're caught red handed, and Wu Sol is taken to solitary. Not long after, Sun Hyub gets out of solitary. Hey guys! and learns that for once his boys didn't have much trouble while he was gone, thanks to Wan John and Sun Yong being focused on Wu Sol. He calls Wan John and Sun Yong out for a talk, and tells them that the situation's changed. With both him and Wu Sol in the maintenance group, they're now overwhelmingly the top dogs of the prison. With this in mind, he proposes... a truce. Sun Hyop says that all they've gained from fighting is injuries, punishment, and extended sentences. Now that his group is confidently the strongest, he essentially tells them that they can either accept the truce, or the maintenance group can crush them. Without much choice, Sun Young and Wan Jong accept the truce. Back in solitary, Wu Sol attempts to use his stay in the cramped room as a quick vacation, before having a nightmare that reminds him that he can't ever stop moving. What the fuck is that? His options for training in the space are limited, so he begins practicing one of the techniques taught to him by Du Hyun, the one not usable in normal matches, the one that's meant for killing. We still never see this technique, but by the time Wu Sol leaves, his elbows and knees are scarred from training. With Seong Hyop's new forced truce in place, months and eventually years go by without much trouble. People come and go from the prison as Wu Sol continues his training and is set to become the new head of the maintenance group once Seong Hyop's sentence ends. Wanting to test his abilities one last time, Wu Sol asks Seong Hyop to fight him before he leaves prison. It's a fairly brief fight where Seong Hyop ultimately just gives up and says he lost because unlike Wu Sol, he doesn't actually enjoy fighting and doesn't really care who wins in this scenario. Wu Sol is unsatisfied and Seong Hyop says that if he wants, they can call it a tie and they'll fight again on the outside if they ever meet. With that, Song Hyup is released, and Wu Sol is the final OG remaining. After another year or so of training, Wu Sol finally leaves the prison he brought peace to, to a round of applause, and as soon as he steps outside, Sok Chan is right there waiting. He gets in his car without hesitation, ready to go wherever he takes him and finish this. They go to an abandoned part of town, and Sok Chan says he's going to show him just how meaningless those three years were. After years of training and battles, the final showdown is here. The two antitheses of the bully revenge genre. The bully who trained himself relentlessly for brutal revenge, and the victim who just wants to leave it behind and move forward. Inspiration versus obsession. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get it.
Damn! How fucking fun is it to watch an actual fight, to not know with complete certainty that your MC is gonna come out on top, to actually feel fucking fear from the enemy. That obviously went by pretty quick. To make it into a montage like that, I had to skip a bunch of dialogue, thought processes, and flashbacks. So let me summarize a few quick things. The technique Doohyun taught Wu Soul to use on Sokchan was just a corkscrew punch. A punch with a bit of a spin on it meant to rip the skin when it hits. The whole point was to land it on or near his one good eye, destroying it or at least covering it with blood to blind him. Wu Soul barely managed to pull it off, and even when he did, the shit wasn't over, as Sokchan is a goddamn menace and just moved in to grab him and refused to let go. Sokchan is so dominant for the majority of this fight that Wu Soul literally breaks down and says, nope, fuck this, fuck revenge, fuck standing up, please god just make this stop. And yet despite this overwhelming skill difference and his fear, Wu Soul still manages to pull through and resolves to kill him. This is the only time we see Sok Chan shook in the whole series when he's made to remember that one slip up when he lost his eye and nearly died. Wu Soul has snapped and is in murder mode, but eventually reels himself back, not out of compassion for Sok Chan or because murder would be wrong, but because he realizes regardless of the circumstances, killing Sok Chan here would ruin his life. It would ruin his dreams of becoming a professional fighter and ruin his promise to do Hyun in the ring. Now, to be honest, Wu Soul almost certainly should have killed this motherfucker. Sokchan is an absolutely unrepentant, sadistic piece of shit, and killing him would solve a lot of problems for everyone. But Wu Soul says, you know what? Fuck that. Fuck that pussy ass revenge shit. You think I'm gonna ruin my life for you? You think you matter that much to me? Nah, I'm gonna get so strong you don't even matter to me. I don't give a fuck about you. I'm gonna live my life. The suffering you put me through ain't gonna break me. I ain't gonna live in fear or pity for myself. Wu Soul is the fucking man. When life hits him, he doesn't cry and scheme in the shadows for revenge. He gets up and says, all right, how can this make me stronger? He's been through an incredible amount of terrible shit and has been treated unfairly by society. But he doesn't go, oh, woe is me, joker mode, because he ain't got time for that petty shit. He doesn't need a magical artifact to fall from the heavens to make him into a demigod. He's just a human who refuses to make excuses or back down. You're built different, I think different, bitch. Wusol's story is actually inspiring. He clawed his way up from the pits of despair and made something great of himself. He's not someone who's invincible, and because of that, his actions are actually fucking brave. Shark also has a ton more going for it, like actually interesting characters and great fight scenes. But ultimately, I'm getting a Discord message. But ultimately, this is the reason I love Shark and hate just about all the other bully revenge manhwa. They, or at least the people reading them, try to claim that they're a cathartic release for poor victims of bullying, and anyone who doesn't get it just doesn't know what it's like to be bullied. This is basically therapy, how dare you? This is absolute fucking bullshit. The only true part of this is that some victims of bullying obviously enjoy reading them, but that doesn't make them cathartic. It's like someone saying that their cathartic release from their porn addiction is fucking a fleshlight. It's not therapy, you're just spiraling yourself further into your self-gratifying addiction. As someone who's been to therapy, it's so fucking annoying seeing people with this misconception of what therapy actually is. In my last video, I made a quick comment about how I love violence, and I got comments from people saying that I should seek therapy just for that. People seem to think therapy is walking into an office and getting hypnotized into being a different person. Therapy is not a cure. You don't just walk in, talk about your problems, and suddenly come out cured a few weeks later. Some mental disorders like ADHD can be combated with prescriptions, but ultimately, there is no cure. You have to live with it. Therapy is not about curing you of your issues, it's about admitting them so you can live your best life despite them. This is exactly what Wu Sol does. He doesn't try to make excuses or run from the fact that he tried to murder Sok Chan. He grows to realize that this tendency to snap into a murderous rage is a problem deep inside him, and fights to combat it so it doesn't ruin his life. If you really want to try to claim that these series are therapy, then okay, what are you learning from your therapy. That if you were more attractive, your life would be better. That if you had a giant magic sword that made you invincible, you could kill everyone you don't like and that'd be awesome. If you're reading for any reason beyond somehow finding these one-shot, quote-unquote, fights entertaining, these series are anti-inspiration that drive you down further into a pit of self-pity and nihilism. You don't go into therapy and scribble murderous notes in your notebook and then your therapist says, mm, yes, we've made a lot of progress today. That's not how it fucking works. You're not gonna wake up one day looking like a model. You're not gonna be chosen by the heavens to get godly powers. You're not gonna become some untouchable uber badass that has secret agents working under you for no reason so you can get your revenge. So fuck it, let's just read this and pretend I'm these guys instead of actually improving myself. But you know what you could do? You could work on yourself to be better. You could self-reflect and fight the dark thoughts so they don't ruin your life. You could rise above it all and be the best you. And if you're someone using the excuse of, ah nah bro, I just turned my brain off here, I'm just here for the fights, well fuck you. Shark still stomps everything else into the dust, neener neener suck my wiener.
Shark is fucking incredible, and I've only shown you a fraction of it. Not only because I skipped basically anything that wasn't absolutely essential, meaning you missed out on a ton of amazing character moments, but because I've only covered the first season. Shark's story is divided up into seasons, with what I've shown you being only season 1 out of 3. The story keeps going and we get to see where characters are now that they're out of jail, how they've changed, how they deal with their criminal record, and how they pursue their new life goals. I told you before that the translation of Shark is rough, but that's not even the saddest part. The saddest part is that the translators eventually gave up on the series, probably because it wasn't getting enough attention. Shark has around 150 chapters translated so far, and over 200 chapters completed. The raws are out there, we just need someone to translate them. I'm hoping that this video will shine a light on the series, and we'll get a full, proper translation of this fantastic comic. Maybe I'll even cover season 2 and 3. I've also decided that in the spirit of lifting up smaller comics, I'm gonna attach a few random recommendations to the end of my videos, or maybe even do a monthly shoutout video, I don't know. Anyways, here's a quick three. The first one is called Chosen of the Void by Scar Books and Brazil Woker. It's the classic pulled into a video game where if you die, you die for real trope, but with a bit of a twist. Instead of the MC being a gamer or a loner, he's the supportive burly uncle type who's been through a lot of shit. He enters the game to get his irresponsible younger brother out and struggles since he's an older guy who doesn't know shit about what's going on. The art is ridiculously good for how little attention it has, and the story's just starting, so it could go anywhere from here. Next is Shibatarian, which is a strange horror manga about Sato and his friend Shibata, who no one else seems to know anything about. One day Shibata disappears, and Sato learns that no one else ever saw him. He begins to wonder if Shibata was just an imaginary friend he made, until later on Shibata returns and begins visiting Sato's friends from high school who were convinced he didn't exist. Only this Shibata clearly isn't the one he knew, and he's not alone. The final one is Skeleton Double, which focuses on a kid named Yodomi who's entered a quiet depression after his dad died in a mysterious accident. One day a box appears on his doorstep with a strange talking skull in it that grants him the ability to turn invisible, among other things, and Yodomi is pulled into the secret world of these mysterious skeleton powers. He begins using them to try to find out what really happened to his dad. Alright, that's the longest video I've made so far, and I have way too many montage edits, but whatever. I also have a Patreon now if you want to support me there, where you can see extra stuff like early thumbnails, scripts, and montage edits. Alright, peace. Alright, now that the video is over, this is completely unrelated, but while I was going through the comments of the old video, I found this. C can someone please tell me what the fuck this guy means? <laughs>